this is Matt with Let's Talk Music. I'm here with Devin and Chris from uh, Wolf Road. These guys are coming to, well, Chris is coming to us from Chicago. How about you, Devin? Where are you at? I'm based out of the West uh, Chicago suburbs, so I live out in uh, Lombard. Gotcha. <clears throat> so uh, tell me, man, uh, tell me about the new single, Way Down. Uh, that that was uh, a pretty awesome, just hard-hitting uh song and really enjoyed it so uh what's what's the background on that song thank you i'm glad you liked it man uh that one's a breakup song you know you could probably tell from looking in the lyrics a lot of heartbreak going into that one but then also wanted to keep it just like uplifting big riffs big energy breakdowns so it's kind of like a super true to being a wolf road song in that sense it's kind of got everything we do it's like catchy Got some heavy, got some riffs. So that was awesome. And that was the first of two singles we put out this summer. We also put out a song, Burn All of Your Bridges, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. I have to check that one out, too. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love your guys' sound. Uh, uh, I definitely love the heavy sound. And, you know, the, it, it was all there, all the qualities. <laughs> so yeah. um, Wolf Road, how'd that come about? Uh, the band just in general you mean or like the name yeah yeah like i mean how'd you guys meet how'd you come up with the name yeah well i guess they do go together that way um so me and then two of the other guys in the band uh nick who's actually my brother and our drummer and then jeff who plays guitar we're in a, a cover band for a while when i started learning to sing we did just like a bunch of pop funk covers originally just like fall Out boy green day stuff like that and at some point in time we need another bass player and Jeff was like, hey, I know a guy. And that's how we got Devin here to come into the picture. And one day we were like, we're going to start writing our own music. We're done with this cover bullshit. So we ended up writing some tunes and ended up being Wolf Road, injecting the heavier kind of music we love too into our mm -hmm. sound. And uh, yeah, the band name's like based off of Des Plaines, Illinois, where I grew up and where we used to practice. Okay. Yeah, I've been through Des Plaines. I, I'm, uh, like I said, used to run up in that area all the time. So how about you, Devin? I mean, what's, what's your take on, you know, the band when, I mean, what, what your resume, I guess, where was you before Wolf Road? Yeah, so uh, before Wolf Road, I was in a bunch of bands uh, that never really got good traction. Um, just because in high school, it was always um, a lot of guys like, hey, let's start a band. I'm like, okay, let's do it. And then a lot of the you know, just life gets in the way or just they really weren't there. But also, I think um, just where I grew up, not a lot of people knew what to actually do. Like, OK, we're in a garage. We're playing instruments. Not very well. Uh, how do we take this to the next level? And then it's like, are you serious about this or not? Uh, but I used to play in a lot of like heavier bands on like the metalcore side of things. So um, when I met Jeff was actually in college. And that's how I actually met like the rest of the guys, because I grew up playing guitar and I was, was a guitarist. But uh, eventually Jeff and I would just kind of like jam around, uh, playing guitar and stuff like that. And then he, uh, showed me what was actually the original riff of one of our older songs called, uh, a twisted world. He showed mm -hmm. me that at this place called uh, Sweetwater in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, where we were at. And then I was like, Oh, that's really cool, man. And then he told me about the band. And then uh, I was like, Hey, if you need a, like anyone at all, like a bassist or anything, I could play bass. I could pick up bass. Um, and then that's pretty much how I ended up becoming a bass player and haven't really touched a guitar as much since then, but it's been, uh, awesome to say the least. Cool. Yeah. I mean, um, so <clears throat> we're, uh, as a bass player, where do you draw your influence from? I mean, what, what made you decide to, you know, slap the four string and like, wh who's like your primary influences? Yeah. For influences, I was kind of like fear that question because I don't really have the very uh, classic kind of guitarist kind of influence questions like people might say something like, oh, I grew up uh, very technical lick heavy like Steve Vai or uh, Joe Satriani or Kirk Hammett from Metallica, stuff like that. Um, but when it comes to bass players, I usually try and go on the more side of I look towards really good active like stage performers who are mm -hmm. bassists uh, more so than the actual just playing the instrument itself because um, like Chris was saying, like, Way Down is a very staple song that resonates as what is and who is Wolf Road. And so a lot of it comes from, like, our high energy and our music, but also how does that translate on stage? So I always try and 
look towards other, like I said, bases that actually find a way to not just stand there or kind of groove, but really show in their actions how they actually want to perform and how the music should sound because it influences your crowd a little bit. So I always looked at, of course, um, like Flea just because of the Chili Peppers because he was always very animated and stuff like that. And then another bassist in another band called Issues, he was always jamming around and hell of a bass player, but also just had a great time on stage too. So it's kind of where I draw my influences a little bit. Okay. Yeah. How about you, uh, Chris? What about your influences? Yeah. <clears throat> as far as like being a frontman, um, you know, I have influences being a singer too, but I'd say mainly for me, it's about being a frontman. Kind of like Devin was saying, our live show and the energy is really the most important part of the band. Um, so I won't even mince it. Like I'd much rather go crazy live and not hit every note perfect or something you know, like I could in the studio than be like the most perfect singer who stands there. So right. for that reason, I'd say like Caleb Shomo is definitely my biggest influence from Beartooth. Mm -hmm. That guy just absolutely loses it all the time. Uh, people like Ollie Sykes, you know, just anyone you can think of who's a crazy frontman like that. That's like really what I'm trying to emulate and do. Yeah, um, that's that's funny because uh, Caleb is his hometown is a suburb of Columbus. He's literally 15 minutes from us. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They were just here and uh, played a, a killer show. I was unable to go, but I seen a lot of video from friends that were there. And I, that's, um, I agree with you on that. Um, I mean, I, I feel like <clears throat> every musician draws influence from someone, you know what I mean? Um, it, it's, it's like, okay, the first time I ever heard, you know, let's just say Metallica, for instance, um, you know, and let's just go with the guitar style, you know, the 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 playing of Kirk Hammett, you know, the way that he uses the wah pedal, whatever that has that's influenced my playing. But as far as, you know, <clears throat> your stage presence, that's equally as if not more important because um you know, you want to go to a concert and you want, especially if it's a heavy concert, man. I mean, you want, you want the, the band to be engaging the audience by jumping around and getting everybody going. I mean, I, I tell you that, <clears throat> um, a good front man is pivotal in a band. I mean, you're the guys that, you know, 90% of the time have the microphone in your hand and, and you're the one that, you know, will get the crowd going. I mean, you know, I've been a con, uh, God rest his soul, but I went to a Tom Petty concert and he stood still the whole time. And <clears throat> I loved the music, but the stage show was not there. So yeah. I, I get where you guys are coming from with that. Well, I've got another one for you then, because you just kind of jogged my memory talking about Tom Petty. It's probably true for Devin, too, because almost everybody our generation, like the first band for them was Green Day. Mm -hmm. And that's very much like the school of thought I came from with Billy Joe, just like the most engaging frontman, the most entertaining band. And I just like watched their set when they played Lollapalooza here in Chicago. You know, I didn't go to the show, but I watched it online and hadn't seen Green Day in a few years. And it's like, yeah, they still fucking bring it every time. So that that was the first one for me that really shaped my idea of like what a lead singer and a frontman should be. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I mean, I, I agree with Devin, too. I mean, if if you want a, a guy that's full of energy and all over the stage, Flea is definitely one of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely keeps it up. Yeah, I mean, the only other one that I can think of back in the day, you know, um, would be Jason Newstead from Metallica. That dude was, mm -hmm. he was pretty energetic, ran all over the stage. I mean, you know, they, a, lot of, a lot of great bass players out there, but, you know, um, Bass players are typically known for just, you know, standing there doing their thing, maybe exactly. you know, banging their head a little bit. It's usually the guitarist and the singer that's uh, running around. So, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, when you have all those elements with everybody, you know, and, and even a flashy drummer, it <clears throat> really engages the crowd. And I think that as musicians, that's one of the most important things you can do. Yeah, just like uh, Chris said, too, like he'd rather worry about having that energy on stage rather than trying to sound pitch perfect every time i mm -hmm. kind of do that in the same way but in terms of i'm usually falling on stage at least once or twice tripping flat on my butt it's happened before plenty of times in front of small to large crowds um but at the end it's like 
that's more fun to me than just trying to like stand still and just play no for no right and really what's the difference between hearing this band live versus just listening to them at home and the studio recorded album you want to at least try and make it different and more of an experience than just listening yeah yeah i mean <clears throat> that's like i said it's um it, it it is a very important thing i mean but it's also like you know you, you said you'd rather do that than you know and make mistakes than you know be perfect up there and i as a music lover and a person who um knows i mean i wouldn't say a minimal about maybe a, a medium amount about the business um you know mistakes are going to happen and it's oh, yeah. it's all part of it um it, it's like i've talked with several people and said you know i think what a lot of people don't understand is that not only are you artists and performers you're also this is your profession this is your job so i, I i'm gonna go out on a limb not a very long one but you know a limb and say there's nobody that does their job perfect 100 percent of the time so you know i mean it's all part of being in the live show man Shit happens. I mean, exactly. I've seen, you know, I remember seeing Mudvayne and, um, oh, what song was they doing? Um, World So Cold. And the part where the bass player sings, his microphone wasn't coming on, you know? So he's kind of like throwing his arm up. He's singing the part still. And finally it came on. But, you know, I mean, they just went on. You know, there wasn't like, oh, sorry about the mistake or anything. It's, it's, it happens. And and people that are true music fans and whatever can expect that. They're not going to be like, oh, man, they fucked up. I'm never seeing them again, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, sure. it's it's definitely, it's a it's a, um, it's a tough business. And, I mean, you guys get out there and give it your all, and, and that's all that anybody can ask for. Yeah, we've definitely gotten unplugged our fair share of times. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the DIY. Well, I actually, um, I actually just did a... Um, music review my first one and well an album review um before i got to interview and you guys and um it's a band called silent theory and <clears throat> they just came out with an acoustic album and you know it's it, it's it's pretty phenomenal i mean and I, i'm not much of an acoustic fan but when you and they're in the same genre as you guys you know when when you take that type of me, uh, music and you s strip it down it's pretty captivating. You guys ever thought about doing an acoustic session? Yeah, we have, man. You should check it out. We uh, we actually did an acoustic reimagined album back, what was that, in last year, 2021? Oh, okay. Um, we did an original acoustic song, and then we did reimagined versions of a couple more. And that was kind of like our COVID project because Wolf Road started right before the pandemic happened. Like, we mm -hmm. only played a couple shows. So, yeah, when the world shut down, it was like all you could do was write music. And we did. But we were also like, shit, we just put out a record. <laughs> so we weren't ready to go to turn around something right away. So that's when we got to working on some acoustic stuff and ended up putting that out last year. So, yeah, that's something we've done before. And it's super cool. We played an acoustic EP release show, too, and sold that out. Had some other great bands that played acoustic sets as a hell of a time. So check out our EP counterpoint. If you like okay. the acoustic stuff. Yeah. See, uh, whenever, um, I get these press releases from publicists, they give me the basic information of, you know, what you're up to now, your newest single and everything. So, you know, I try to do a little bit of research, you know, but I don't always get everything in place. So I apologize for that. You know, it just, uh, oh, I, no I, it's tough, man. I do a lot of bands. I mean, you're, right, you're, you're, you're my second one today and my last one, which is, is the way I've set it up. But I mean, there's been days that I've done, you know, I get off of work, I come home, I throw some food down my neck, and then I'm doing four or five interviews. So, Hell yeah. Roll. But I mean, my, my whole goal and purpose of this is, you know, to get you guys out there the best way I can, you know, on my Facebook page, um, you know, my um my youtube and here soon i'm gonna be starting a podcast to where you know i'm gonna get a hold of different bands such as yourselves and, and, and say hey you know give me some new music so that you know 
because I want about, you know, 50 to 60% of the podcast itself. See, this is just, I do interviews and put it on YouTube. The podcast, I want to be able to take independent artists and, and whatnot and take their music and play it on a platform where it can get heard even more. So, I mean, I, I admire what you guys are doing and, you know, I, I want to help it in any way possible. I mean, this for me is more of just, um, you know, at the moment, a hobby it's, it's, uh, I do it out of, <laughs> out of my dining room, you know, I'm, I don't have a studio or anything like that. I just, you know, I do it because I love music and I love hearing new music and I love meeting musicians. Again, yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. We, we so, appreciate I mean, the shit out of that. Hey, no problem, man. I mean, this is, um, you know, it's what it's all about. I mean, metal, anybody that is into metal, anybody that loves it, it, it knows that metal is a community. And, right. you know, everybody within that community has to stick together. I mean, that's, that's how we keep the music alive. You know, and um, I feel like, you know, it just music is the one thing i think on, on this world that can bring people together no matter their background you know um I, i've been to rap concerts i've been to country concerts i've been to you know metal concerts and everybody has one thing in common they're there to have fun listen to music and jam you know and, and you don't find that too much in this messed up world anymore yeah, so. it's awesome that you're into so many different types of music too. Love that. Well, um, I, I started, you know, my, my website is called uh, rockmusicandmore.com. And that's the whole and more. I figure if I close myself off to, you know, rock is my primary knowledge. But if I, if I close myself off to, you know, one genre, then I'm missing out on all kinds of opportunities. You know, I mean, I, I spoke with a, a pop band from um, Poland not too long ago and then a indie folk metal band from India. I mean, that sounds awesome. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm telling you, you guys want to check out some pretty cool music. The band's called Denver. It's like D-Y-M-B-E-R or B-U-R or something like that. Um, they take their traditional instruments and incorporate it with Western metal. And at first I was like, eh, do I really want to do this? Then I listened to them. And I was like, holy shit, these guys are actually pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is, man, you, you got to open yourself up or you just, you know, you, you miss out on stuff. And that's what I've been loving about this whole thing is I get introduced to all kinds of different music, all kinds of different people. I mean, it's been an amazing ride and i've only been you know doing it for probably about a year solid now so yeah you know that's awesome and this is like a, you know zoom is awesome because you guys are you know in chicago they was in india you know whatever i can reach across the world and talk to somebody but man live is where it's at i love doing live interviews they're just you know especially after a band plays a show you can go up and say, Hey man, you know, that was a great show. And, and everybody's still pumped. You know, you're pumped from being in the crowd. The, the, you know, artist is pumped from being on stage. I mean, that's, that's to me is one of the greatest feelings. We'll have to get you out to Chicago then. So you can check us out and we'll do that for real in person. Then man, whenever uh, you need guest lists or anything, just hit us up. Dude. I, uh, I haven't been to Chicago in years, so that would be a nice trip. Yeah. So the old Windy City, it's been, uh, God, a long time. But, you know, I mean, hell, it's only six and a half, seven hours from here. So speaking of which, uh, any tour plans that you guys are getting out anytime soon to play? We're working on booking some stuff. We don't have anything official we can announce yet. But um, right now we do have one Chicago show coming up September 3rd, or was it the 4th? Do you remember, Devin? Yeah, it's, it's the 4th. Sunday. It's the Sunday before uh, Labor Day. Okay. Yeah, September 4th at Cobra Lounge with our buddies in Fluorescence and we'll met and keep flying. So that's a great stacked bill, like heavy pop punk bands. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think uh, Keep Flying is like kind of ska and stuff like that, too. Okay. So that's a stacked lineup. And uh, yeah, more stuff happening this year that we can't quite talk about yet. But uh, we're trying to stay busy in terms of putting out even more songs. 
and more shows and all the good stuff. Okay. Now it, it, the EP, what is that called? Which one? Your newest one. Uh, so the newest EP that we put out was the acoustic one mm -hmm. that came out last year, Counterpoint. Mm -hmm. And then right now we've got a couple singles out. And uh, that's Way Down was the one that came out in June. And then Burn All of Your Bridges we put out like two weeks ago. Okay. Any uh, oh, uh, any plans of doing any LPs or you just keeping it simple for right now? Right now we're doing the singles thing, you know, just trying to put out as many songs as we can instead of like, you know, if you had a bunch and you, you dumped them all at once, we're kind of doing one song at a time so we can stay out there and meet new people and doing stuff like this. But, uh, you know, later this year, there might be a bigger piece of music put together, you could say. Cool. So that, that's something you can't really talk about, huh? <laughs> Not at the moment. Right. But, uh, but, you know, if you keep following us at Wolf Road Band, at Wolf RD is Road RD, mm -hmm. at Wolf RD Band. And, you know, you definitely won't stop seeing new stuff from us. Yeah, I mean, that that actually seems to be the ongoing business strategy right now is, uh, you know, singles. Keep releasing singles. You know, people are doing it, you know, a couple weeks apart, a couple months apart, whatever. But I mean, you know, I, and, and I understand it, you know, with with the uh, day and age of digital music and downloading and everything, it makes more sense to, you know, put out singles than it does to throw down a, you know, a whole album. Um, I think most of the people that I have talked to, they're like, yeah, you know, today's generation has the attention span of a gnat. So they're not going to sit there and listen to a whole album. They're going to listen to that one song that they like, even if they listen to the whole thing. And I was like, yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, I remember as a kid, you know, listening to, you know, when I bought master of puppets, I mean, hell master of puppets song is like nine minutes long. And I listened to that whole album end to end, you know, this, I don't, I don't know. It's today's generation is definitely different. <laughs> I think uh, what pairs with it too, because I mean, we're of that generation that that label was kind of thrown towards and attached to as we grew up from like even middle school up until, you know, our adulthood now of just like the attention span. But I think really what it comes down to is just, if you look at how the digital landscape across all media, social music, whatever you want to look at it as, it's also just catered to not so much um, physical, but actually getting sales. I mean, every musician we've learned of, even like big national touring acts, they make, they don't they rarely make anything off their actual music anymore. It's all about your merchandise. It's about your brand. It's about mm -hmm. your experiences, all like that. Just because that's more tangible than, unfortunately, record sales. Like being a musician really isn't being a musician anymore. It's being a content creator. And it, right. it's terrible to say that, but at the same time, it's just a reality. So it's like, unless there is some sort of grandiose change within the next decade or anything like that, that forces a huge halt to the operations of media streamers like Spotify and Apple Music and all the other powerhouses out there. I mean, that's really how you have to kind of play the game. It's just the singles versus an album. Um, you could spend the same amount of money, but really what's going to do to actually get you your band name out there be more discovered or actually propel yourself into the next level of making it a career and a profession it really just comes down to how well can you actually play the game with the industry and we all know it can be very fickle but at the same time mm -hmm. what makes it worth it is when you meet a new fan or you get a new fan just by playing a show outside of your town and then someone realizes oh you guys are really cool i never would have heard of you unless i just happen to go to this thing today or like those little moments really make it worthwhile as a musician so then people do kind of, oh, you know what? I want to check out your other stuff. It's pretty cool. It's just relationship building too. But right. it's just there's so much that can really take play. And it's always kind of cool to hear uh, even bands you've known from like Metallica to Green Day to whoever. They usually always have like a very interesting story of like, well, how did you get discovered? Or what actually took it to this is no longer just what we like doing, but now this is actually going to be a monumental thing in our life. How do you actually kind of categorize that so it's always kind of cool to hear how everyone's story is a little bit different right well and that's what i was kind of touching on earlier is that you know <clears throat> I, I probably myself would have not heard of you guys had it not been for your publicist shooting me a, a a press release and you know 
whenever they do so, I read it, I listen to whatever songs featured, you know, whatever. And, you know, it's like I said, it's just been it's been great. I mean, it's I, I've discovered a lot of great music, a lot I've talked to a lot of great people. Um, and that's that's part of actually one the biggest reason that I got into this, you know, is because it's just, you know, we, your national sign bands, you know, your big corporate backed bands that they they've got all the, you know, promotion they could ever want, you know, and, and I mean, they're played on, you know, all the radio stations, blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know, it's cool, but I mean, discovering there's, there's so much music everywhere. I mean, there's, there's tons of it here in Columbus, you know, Chicago, New York, Wisconsin, I mean, everywhere, man. And, you know, it just, I think that all of it just, I, I, I don't know how it would happen, but all of it just needs to be heard because I mean, you know, you guys truly do have a gift. I mean, you know, it, it's not easy to do what you do. You know, it takes practice, it takes patience, and it takes, you know, a, a natural ability. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people kind of don't understand that, that, you know, it's not just, oh, well, I picked up a guitar one day, watched a couple of videos, and next thing I know, I'm, you know, Eddie Van Halen. So I wish. Yeah, me too. So, I mean, it is, it's, um, you guys, you guys definitely, my hat's off to you because you, what you do is not easy. Um, you know, especially when you're out on the road away from home and stuff, um, you know, and just all the all the BS to it, man. I mean, it's not all, you know, glam and glory. I know that. But I do appreciate you, you know, what you just said about how it makes it all worth it, worth it, because, I mean, it, it it's. It's different for everybody, you know, what I mean, it's like definitely I was discussing with a guy earlier that, you know, how I was at a Lincoln Park concert and, you know, they were playing in the end and like the band actually just stopped because the crowd was singing the song so loud. I couldn't imagine as an artist or a musician how that would feel, you know, I mean, and, and it can work the same way for, you know, smaller bands because you guys, you guys create a following, you, um, you build fans, you get to a place where you're playing and a bunch of your fans are there and then, they're jamming with you and singing back to you. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're playing a stadium of, you know, 60,000 or a club of, you know, 1500, it's still the same feeling. I'm sure. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I know this probably hits even more personal for Chris just because he's a kind of a mastermind before a lot of our lyrics that people are screaming back to us, but just like that's whole, one of the biggest reasons why I was as a little kid, uh, when I saw these musicians having people sing their music back to them, that's when I realized like, I want to do that. I want to be a musician. I want to be a performer just because that is so incredible. And it still amazes me, even though we're a little local band, like sometimes we still have, I mean, a lot of times we have a lot of people just singing along to our song and it makes it a great way to end off the night. And it's just something that just, I, I will never get tired of. It just always never ceases to amaze me. I bet. Now, how about you, Chris? Uh, what was, what got you into music? Yeah. Um, I guess getting into music in general, I mean, I've been into music for a long time, starting off with music my parents were new, honestly. Like, I loved classic rock as a kid, and then eventually got into more, like, metal and the warp Tour scene, like, metalcore and stuff like that, pop punk. Um, you know, probably when I was, like, 12, I, I started playing guitar, I think, so, and then started singing when I was, like, 18, and, uh, yeah, here we are, and definitely want to echo what Devin was saying. Like if you see us in Chicago fucking pops off, everybody's singing like our song Oakton, a twisted world, stuff like that. Had some times where even like during the verse, I don't even have to sing. If I want, I can just hold it up the mic up to somebody's face and let them go. Right. And uh, yeah, local band for not much longer, man. So everyone's got to get it while it's good and definitely see us in Chicago, but we're trying to, bring the show to you and before you know it everyone will know the words around the country and around the world too hell yeah yeah man well i um i appreciate your guys's time um definitely um 
if I can make it up that way, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you a message and, and, and come see you guys. We'll do a live one. Um, but you know, just keep on doing what you're doing. I mean, you got, you guys are awesome. Um, done downloaded the song to my phone, you know, was jamming it just before you called in. Cause you know, I like to get a little pumped up for the interview. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, uh, uh, you guys, uh, best of luck to you out there. Um, safe in your travels and I'll hopefully talk to you soon. Thanks so much for having us. All, All right. right. Thank you, my guy. Have a good one, guys. Take care. You too.